Welcome to Just Mind My Business Media, where you get information that you can use. Just a quick reminder, don't forget to subscribe to Just Mind My Business right here on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. So grab your notebook and a pen and get ready for information that you can use. Well, I am so happy to bring to Just Mind My Business today. Michael Shagela, who is the founder and CEO of Rank Harvest LLC. Rank Harvest offers premium digital marketing services to local and national businesses in competitive markets, difficult niche challenges, product launches, and repairing damaged SEO. And but one of the things Michael also does, he is a visionary providing strategic direction. His current internal project is developing strategies for branch brands, I'm sorry, wanting to enter the metaverse. Brank Harvest owns premium virtual real estate in Decentral and is building a walk-in interactive experience at the location. Wow, that's deep, metaverse. So I guess I want to start right there. So let's define for our audience, what is metaverse? Metaverse. So it is a bit of a difficult concept if you if for, for people that are new to it. So almost like a video game, there's these worlds you can step into and everyone that you see around you in this virtual world are real people also sitting at their computer walking around. Um, there's buildings you can walk into that people have built. There's cars. It's it's a digital, it's a digital reality that you can enter into through your computer. And it's getting popular enough where a lot of brands are trying to figure out how to have a presence in this world. So we're we're helping with, with that. And it, it's technical, it involves you know, purchasing land in a virtual world usually ends up um, being purchased using cryptocurrency. Um, then you have to get kind of a, a digital architect to design and build a building. And then um, you can fill it with products that either represent products you have in the real world or digital products that you may allow people to purchase right there in this world. Um and we help brands get into that space. Wow. That's very, very interested. I mean, I, re- I started hearing, hearing about it more during the pandemic is when yeah. I started hearing about it a whole lot more. And um, I, I, I think I did a one little kind of thing where I had my own rooms that I could design the way I wanted and people could come in and at a conference room, an office, things like that. Is that on the same line as Metaverse? Exactly the same thing. We actually have a digital, Rank Harvest has a digital headquarters um, in Decentraland. There's several different virtual worlds. Decentraland is one of them. And we can actually, um, when we're hiring people, um, through our, for our agency to help us in that space, we'll actually conduct the interviews virtually in our virtual headquarters. Um, oh, there's wow. a lot of neat stuff there. It's it may be new to much of your audience right now, but it won't be in the future. Um, especially if you if you've got young kids, uh, one of the things you see them do a lot is play games like Roblox, mm-hmm. and all they do. They're running around in in these virtual worlds, so to them, it's it's very familiar. Um, okay. But many of us, it's still kind of a, a new concept. Yes, yes. Well, I, I'm definitely taking a look at it um, because I'm I'm interested to know how it's going to play out in the world going forward. Forward. Yeah, there's already um, you know there there's concerts. Real performers have virtual concerts there. Wow. Um, I think there's this big famous auction house 
um, based, I think, in London. Um, they've got a space there, Snoop Dogg and people like that. Um, uh, fashion brands now have a presence in in these virtual worlds. So it, it's catching on pretty quick. Mm, okay. Interesting. Wow. So let's talk a little bit about your Fiverr experience and how you did it. Yeah, so I, I've got a very interesting Fiverr story. And so in case anyone doesn't know, um, Fiverr is a, a website or a platform, you may call it, that just connects freelancers with people needing work done. For example, if you're a small business owner and you need a logo redesigned, you go on Fiverr, you find someone that designs logos, maybe you look at their portfolio, they kind of, you like their design style. And generally for around $5, um, a freelancer will design that logo for you. And um, it's meant mostly kind of for these short term, just quick little projects that people need done. Um, but when I came on the platform, I saw this as a big opportunity. First of all, you're not limited to just selling $5 services. Mm -hmm. I said, why not bring all of our digital marketing services into Fiverr? There's probably high level buyers on there. Not everyone is someone looking for a $5 logo. I mean, there's yeah. some, you know, marketing directors and marketing managers that are looking for work on there and they're willing to pay extra um, for a higher, let's say higher level, higher quality work. So our average selling price on Fiverr is over $600. And we average around $50,000 a month sales on that platform, selling a, a, a variety of different um, digital marketing services. And we never even really intended to do this when we launched uh, Rank Harvest or when I launched Rank Harvest. Um, I actually just created our fiber profile to see if we can get a few hundred bucks in the door each month to kind of help keep the lights on around here. And, uh, you know, that's when I kind of had this idea, well, why not apply the same business practices that I'm applying to my full agency, the same business practices, let's see if they work in fiber. And like I said, sure enough, they did. We're, we're selling larger packages um, to, buyers that had larger budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing things like testing pricing. You know, what happens if we double our prices? And, you know, we quickly realized that while everyone else on Fiverr is in this race to the bottom, like who can do the most work for the least amount of money? You know, we said, well, what happens if we do the opposite? What happens if we intentionally are the most expensive, you know, of certain type of service on the platform? And um, it worked. There, there's people out there that are looking for that level of service. You know, we we made sure to add value to. We weren't selling the same service, right? You know, five hundred dollars that someone else is selling for five, and just sort of, you know, price gouging them or whatever you want to call it. Um, we but we were giving them agency quality work that was worth that they're you know these high price tags. And uh, very quickly, we realized we were one of the few sellers on that platform that, that, that offered that level of quality. And there's a ton of buyers and it, it really took off. So we are actually, you know, we're, we're one of the top or high volume, most high volume sellers of Fiverr, while at the same time being one of the most expensive. Wow. And that just goes to show, you know, people are not always looking for cheap. <laughs> And yeah, we tend to find that a lot of our customers, um, especially if they're coming out, of, if they're if they're in the corporate world, let's say a marketing manager, and they, they've got a budget, um, they don't have time to sort through, you know, five, you know, there's 500 people selling the same thing. Like, they don't have time to go through and mm -hmm. interview and all these people. What they tend to do a lot of times is they'll filter their results by, you know, who's the most expensive because um, there's an there's an assumption of a higher quality there. Yes. And as long as indeed you are giving them a higher quality service, you know, they'll they'll keep coming back to you. 
Now, if you just arbitrarily increase your rates, you know, to be expensive, you know, you'll you'll quickly get discovered that uh, it's not worth the money, and you're not going to get any repeat business. But right, um, wow. So yeah. Anyway, and, and then so for us, Fiverr is an entire business division. We have multiple full time people here who do nothing but um, work within our Fiverr environment. Wow, that's interesting. And you also scaled a small energy company from 20 million to nearly 70 million. So you obviously know how to make the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I was fortunate that um, you know, I, I had a before before I had Rank Harvest um, digital marketing agency, I had a long career in corporate marketing. And I was fortunate to get hired on as a director of kind of an IT director slash digital marketing director. Okay. We're, we're a small enough company where, you know, you, you the management kind of where everyone wore multiple hats. So mm -hmm. anyway, it was kind of in the early days of residential solar in California. And, you know, I, I, I got on board right before you know, that, that industry really took off. So, uh, myself and a group of a small group of directors and a, a business owner, um, we, we took this business from up, up to $70 million in just a matter of a few years. Wow. And so I, I witnessed in that short period of time, just had a front row seat and, uh, just, and, uh, and as a decision maker as well, um, you know, rapidly, rapidly growing this company, like always n never being able to hire enough people, always needing more resources, more trucks, more everything. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it really, it really taught me a lot. I was fortunate to be there. Yeah. So it just sounds like you know how to put it together, you know, in order to make moves like that, you evidently have the education, the knowledge to make it happen. Yeah. Well, what, one of the things that it maybe the most important thing it taught me was was not to be scared. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of people out there have great business ideas, uh, but they're they're scared to make that first step or, or or to really do anything about it. Or maybe they already have a, a day job and they're getting a steady paycheck and they just can't give that stability up you know, to go, to go follow their dreams. But, you know, growing that company, there was no, there was no time for that. You just, on a regular basis, we we're making big consequential decisions and they weren't all correct. We made mistakes, uh, but you quickly realize that you just course correct and you just keep on moving forward. And as mm -hmm. long as you just stay driven and work hard at it, um, you know, it's, there's no guarantee of success, but success is probably easier to attain than, than most people think. Yeah. And you're certainly not going to find success with your own business if you don't even take that first step. Absolutely. Yeah. You, absolutely. You can't, you got to do it, you know, and the mistakes is part of the growth to success. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So if people want to work with your company, how do they do so? Well, there's there's two two divisions of Rank Harvest. Um, we have the Fiverr division, which we sell digital marketing services through Fiverr. Uh -huh. um, then we're also kind of a standard digital marketing agency that works directly with clients. And we, we keep those two separate. Um, partly because once someone has done business with us on Fiverr, um, we don't want to pull them out of there and move them into the agency side. You know, it's becoming a Fiverr, we keep you in Fiverr. Reach out to us direct, we keep you on the direct agency side. And we tend to work with um, mid size to large size businesses. We specialize in bringing traffic to websites, either through SEO, organic search, or through paid ads. Um, but we also have other services. We have 
um, WordPress developers, we, we build websites, um, you know, we do social media management about a lot of things. But generally speaking, we focus on the science of bringing um, visitors to websites. For example, we're not we're not a creative agency. You wouldn't come to us if, let's say, you wanted um, to rewrite your mission statement or have an, a new logo, something like that. We're really on the technical side of driving business through um, through the internet. Oh, okay, okay, good to know. SEO. A lot of companies, especially smaller businesses, they don't really see the value in SEO until they, I guess, until they get really deeper into their business and they, oh, I need to implement this. But in the early days, that is not on the top of the list. Yeah, I think part of the problem with SEO there's, there's several problems. I mean, it's a great investment, but sometimes a hesitation is, number one, they've either worked with an SEO agency or had a friend who worked with an SEO agency that was a little scammy. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, it's the majority of SEO agencies, freelancers, services out there um, really don't provide a great service for, for what you're paying. It's it's just kind of is what it is. So a lot of people have been burned or heard about someone getting burned and they're reluctant to give it a try for themselves. Um, the other issue we see a lot is that um, doing SEO properly, it costs money. Yes, the traffic is you know free, but you do have to pay an SEO professional to, to get you there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, especially if it's a smaller business, and they're looking at, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollar uh, monthly SEO spend. They want immediate results. And that's just not how SEO works, especially if your site is new to SEO. You may be cutting a check to your SEO agency for the next three to six months before you're even getting results. Mm -hmm. And that can be really hard for a small business owner to swallow. But the ones who do it and stick with it, uh, the return on investment is wonderful. Um, you know, it, it's different than, let's say, paid ads, where if you're getting traffic from paid ads and you, you, you turn off your budget, poof, those ads are gone. The traffic just ends at that very second. With SEO, let's say you've been doing SEO for a while and you've built up your rankings and your traffic. And let's say you've got a so slow sales month or the seasonality is such that, you know, for the month, for winter months, you're not doing any sales anyway. Um, you can actually just stop your SEO budget, do nothing about it. And your SEO will generally kind of coast along for quite a while. It's, it's a very persistent, it's very persistent. Mm -hmm. um, so once Google likes you, you, you know, amazing things start to happen. Like you can write a blog post on answering a question that you know people are asking Google a lot. And let's say one morning you, you get to work and you know, you don't, you're a little burned out. You don't feel like doing kind of your regular work that day. And you're like, well, I'm gonna sit here and write a blog post for a couple hours. You know, let's say you write this blog post, you put it in your website and two weeks later, you're getting all kinds of traffic to that. You know, just because Google likes you, it likes your article you wrote. Um, mm. it, it's a it's a fun. I mean, for me, SEO is a lot of fun. It's it's full of surprises. It's equal parts art and science. Um, even when we have a customer, that customer, if they want to get involved, we can get them involved. We'll give them, especially content writing, if if they like to write blog posts. Well, we'll give you a whole list of, of titles to write that are going to help drive traffic to the site. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, SEO, it's, it's difficult to understand. It's difficult to justify, you know, perhaps several months of no results, but you're still writing that check. Uh, but yeah, people who stick with it, man, it, it just always pays off. Yes, yes, I, I I think so, you know, because it's important. That's like organic customers. Yeah, yeah, and and 
organic customers from organic search yes um, convert higher than than paid paid traffic or traffic generally from other sources you know except for you know referral you know if you refer a friend you know th those people are always you know relatively easy sales mm -hmm. um, but kind of aside from from some of those sources um, organic traffic is very highly converting Yes, yes, it is because they they searching for something. They actually yeah. looking, you know. Yeah. Whereas with the paid, you kind of just putting it out there and hoping yeah. and praying they looking. <laughs> yeah. Especially on, for example, social media. You know, if you're if you're if you're selling a, a large ticket item, like let's say uh, I don't know. Uh, a solar system, for example, you know, $30,000 solar system, and you're running paid ads in social media, you know, you, you can't, because it's not a search engine, you don't know exactly what that person just typed in. You don't, you don't know what they're thinking right at that moment. All you can really do is put that ad in front of enough people until finally someone says, you know, it just so happens I've been thinking about solar and here's an ad. Yeah. You know, not, not to put social media advertising down but sometimes some products are a better fit for for a different platform you know social media ads work really well for impulse buys or things that don't take a lot of research or um aren't very expensive or something like solar might be a better fit for google ads where you can put that ad right on top of someone who's searching like who who's the best solar company in san diego you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you need to know what's what's the best thing for your product. Yeah. Or bet with the, actually the, the best thing to do, um, if you can get your website to rank well in organic search results, then also do paid ads in, in Google. So you're appearing twice on that page. Mm -hmm. Then also doing social media ads. Uh, you can really get a lot of impressions um, onto an individual. And uh, th that's really where it gets powerful. It's kind of when you're combining all of them. And in a way, they're almost meant to work like that. They all kind of have their own little niche in the sales funnel and decision-making process. Yes. So, Michael, do you do anything with AI? Yes. Um so we use it mainly for assistance with content writing. Um, we don't let it write articles for us, or let me take a step back. So a lot of, a lot of our customers come to us for SEO. In fact, that's one of our specialties. Mm -hmm. A big SEO is content writing. It's filling a website full of all kinds of information about whatever the industry or products or services um, that business is selling. And a lot of times when it comes to generating content, uh, we'll use AI to kind of help us write an outline. Like, let's say we want to, we want, we're writing a, a blog post about, um, you know, the best way to fix a broken watch, you know, I don't know, something random like that. Okay. We will use AI to kind of write an outline for us. It'll come up with, you know, what questions are people asking? Um, what's some valuable information? And then we'll go back in as humans and kind of fill in the blanks. We're a bit reluctant to let AI write entire articles um, because it's a little unclear on how Google, what Google's opinion is on content written by AI. Mm -hmm. And we want to fill our customers' websites with AI content only to discover in six months from now that Google doesn't think that visitors find AI content valuable and sort of rips a rug out back out from underneath us. Yes. You know, as more time goes by, it is looking like Google doesn't care so much who wrote it, robot or human. Mm -hmm. What Google's looking at is, um, you might call them engagement metrics. Regardless of who wrote an article, when someone comes to that page, how long are they staying? 
You know, if you wrote a 1500 word article, Google knows how long a human visitor takes to read that. So it says, okay, on average, are visitors staying long enough to have read that entire article? If the answer is yes, then Google says, great, visitors find this helpful. I'm going to move it up and search results and get more traffic to it. The inverse of that is um, Google sends a visitor to a blog post and three seconds later, that visitor hits the back button and goes back out to search. Well, you've just taught Google that visitors don't find that, that blog post valuable and it's going to sink in, in search. So we, we try to use AI as an assistant, but at this point in time, really only a human can craft the content into somewhat of a story. And I, I don't care how dry you think a topic is, you can still kind of turn it into, into a story and that there's kind of a beginning and an end and only a human can add a little sarcasm in there, you know, that kind of thing. Some of the things yeah. that keep readers a bit engaged. So um, the other places we use AI is, let's say we have a customer who's got a large e-commerce site and they're selling iPhone cases. Mm -hmm. And let's say that the product description on each one of those pages um, is identical um, other than it just says, this one is red, this one is blue. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, if you, if you're, if you've got a thousand iPhone cases for sale and they're all on your website, so that's a thousand separate product pages. Um, and all those product descriptions are virtually identical across all of them. That's bad for, for SEO. Um, we may turn AI loose on writing unique product descriptions for each one of those mm. in a way that a human can't do. You could never, you could never go to a human content writer and say, okay, I have a thousand iPhone cases. The only difference between them is the color. Give me a thousand unique product descriptions. Right. You know, they go mad doing that. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> And AI is able to make it different a thousand times. Yeah. Uh, AI is certainly used in additional areas in digital marketing. Um, and it's certainly going to be used even more as time goes on. Mm -hmm. But right now, I would say that 90% of the use of AI is around um, content writing and um uh, probably image generation. You know, if if you don't want to pay to pay for a a stock image from the blog post you just wrote, you know, you can go into AI and say, you know, generate me an image of a bear drinking a soda, and mm -hmm. you know it'll do it for nearly free. And there you go, you've got an original image for your absolutely, you know, absolutely, wow. So digital marketing, it's just so much to it. And your main niche is SEO. Uh, what other um, services do you provide? SEO, I think you said website. Yeah, so our two main services are um, SEO and paid ads, which okay. again, is just mostly driving traffic to our customer sites. Okay. Um, but then we also we also do everything digital marketing on the technical side, which is building websites. Uh, we even do email marketing, um, content writing. Um, the only thing we kind of don't do kind of as a standalone, we don't really do graphic design. We're not kind of the creative, like I said before, we're, we're not a creative agency. We're on the technical side. We're, we're more a bunch of engineers over here than you know, if if you go in any corporation and go in their marketing department, um, it's always a bunch of, and I don't mean this in a bad way, kind of like liberal arts type of folks, communication mm -hmm. degrees and things like that, and and you, and that's wonderful, and they're they're great people. We're not that. We're more folks that came out of, let's say, 
more like software engineering. Mm-hmm. And we're able to put the pieces together and do the analytics um, that gives us a, a real edge when it comes to um, driving traffic. Oh, okay. So, yes, yes. So how would people connect with you if they want to, your services? <clears throat> uh, the easiest way is just to go to rankharvest.com and just fill out our contact form. And um, if they say that they heard about us through you, um, I will get on a live Zoom with them and talk about their project, give them some advice. I'll audit their site. And even if it turns out that we're not a good fit for what they need, um, I they will walk away with a bunch of valuable information and I'll, I will help put them on the right path. Absolutely. So thank you so much for that, Michael. This has been uh, definitely a, a educational conversation with you. I know I learned some stuff, you know, because I'm I'm working on SEO right now. That's my next thing to get my SEO. And like you mentioned earlier, I was working with the company. They seemed okay the first year. After that, it was they didn't. I couldn't contact them when I had questions, and that definitely is a turnoff to me if I can't contact you and talk. <laughs> well, I I can. I... One quick point on that, um, we get a lot of customers who had fired their previous agency and the number one reason is not lack of results. You know, any good SEO agency can bring traffic. Um, The number one reason of firing their previous agency is lack of communication. Yes. Either I kept writing a check to this company, I have no idea where my budget's going, um, or I call in there, either nobody answers a phone or I can't get in touch with anybody who has any familiarity with my project. Yeah. So really the communication side, that's the issue. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. Communication. They was doing pretty good until I wanted to talk. (laughs) And then that just messed up everything. (laughs) It does. Yeah. It's. What what most SEO agencies do is they do what I call assembly line SEO, which is everyone, no matter what your website does or anything of your, any of your business's unique characteristics or the website's characteristics, you're put down the same assembly line. And, you know, if you start asking questions and asking for anything outside of the assembly line, man, they really don't want you to go there. It's just kind of like stay in this assembly line it, because at each station, you know, just like building a car at each station, they've discovered how to get real efficient. Like how, how low can we pay someone to do this job yeah. or, you know, and you just don't end up with, first of all, anything that looks like quality work. And second of all, nothing that's customized to the customer. So the way we get around that is all of our customers get a dedicated account manager and we don't overload these folks. You know, our account managers have maybe 10 or 15 accounts. Mm -hmm. So they are intimately involved in each one of their customers. And so all of our customers have someone at Rank Harvest advocating for them, bringing them up at meetings, Asking, you know, who else has had success with a customer like this, you know, and building these custom strategies. And that's how you get really good at SEO. And uh, our customers definitely do not, there's no lack of communication with our customers. We, from the get-go, we decided that was going to be a problem we were not going to have. Right, exactly. Because that communication is crucial. You know, when you're dealing with people, and because people are going to have questions. They don't know like you know. You know, they're going to have questions. And you should be available to answer them, not by email, not by text, but a yeah. real live person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with us, you, you get your account manager's email. Um, email this person anytime. Uh, they'll jump on Zooms with you anytime. We'll walk you through issues that are totally unrelated to SEO. Of course, <laughs> my account managers might be like, no. But <laughs> the reality is 
you know, if you're hung up on something else, you know, that we can help with, we're, we're going to help you with it. Yes. And that's the way business should be the human yeah. thing. You know, I mean, it's, it's like the grocery store. I hate that self checkout. I did not want to walk around the whole store doing groceries, scan it, bag it. I don't want to do all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, lo a lot of our customers really appreciate that at the end of every month, your account manager will ask you, hey, do you want to get on a Zoom and talk about what you just paid for for the last 30 days? And... um you know, they really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. So. Yes, yes. And you are, I mean, that customer service thing is becoming so distant now. That that voice-to-voice, face-to-face yeah. communication. And they now use an AI to answer questions. No, I don't want to talk to AI. I want to talk to a live person. <laughs> well. From, from from a business's perspective, customer support's expensive. Good good customer support that actually delights people and actually helps them, you know, it's expensive. It's not something you can easily have AI do. Um, depending on what you're selling, it's not necessarily something you can offshore to someone who will do it for, you know, an unlivable wage. Um so most companies just try their best to avoid customer support. Like when you're looking at your books at the end of the year and it's like you've spent a lot of money on customer support, if you don't, at a glance, that's like, you look at that as the first place to like eliminate costs. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let's, let's just cut costs in customer support. Um, but customers really feel that. And what you lose sight of is, you never want to lose, you never want to lose a customer. There, there's nothing better than a repeat customer because again, from the, from the business perspective, if you get a repeat customer, you only paid one marketing dollar to get that customer. And then every time they repeat order, there's no marketing cost, no more marketing costs involved in that. Mm -hmm. If you lose that customer and have to replace them with someone new, well, now you got to spend marketing dollars to get them again. Yeah. So you know, I, I kind of hate to look at it from such a, a dry kind of numbers, purely numbers point of view, but that's that's kind of what it, it boils down to. And you don't always see that at the year end report, you know, when you've got this big customer support budget and as you know, they are the company, you want to whittle that down. But what you're not seeing is how many customers you're keeping as a result of that. Yes. And that's important. Repeat customers. You yeah. want them to, and then repeat customers tell other people. So, oh, yeah. Another yeah. organic uh, encounter. Because people, yeah. when, they, they, when they treat it good, they're going to tell some folks. <laughs> we have a lot of this, you know, when people realize they discovered like, like a, an ethical SEO agency that actually communicates them, with them and gets results, yeah. they're like, my gosh, like <laughs> I've got their friends who have been looking for exactly this. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's like, you know, that's just another form of SEO, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Well, Michael, this has been very, very um, eye opening. You are a pleasure to talk with. And I'm looking forward to more collaborations with you going forward. And thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to share with us, as well as you, audience. So thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.